I want to tell you about a seven-year-old from Leeds who lost his mum to cancer. Now, he's raised more than £55,000 for the hospice, that's hospice that supported her. This is Jacob Newson. He's just climbed Yorkshire's Three Peaks with his dad, Andrew, in memory of his mum, Andrea, who died aged 49 from breast cancer. Hi everyone, day one, mountain one. I'm doing I'm climbing one side today in memory of my mummy. Day three, mountain three, I'm climbing one um pedi again today in memory of my mummy. Hey! He is wearing a flying suit. That's because he wants to join the RAF as a pilot Aww. when he grows up. It was a grueling three-day, 7,000 feet hike up Ingleborough, Wernside and Penny Ghent in uh, the Yorkshire Dales. He raised £55,572.46 for St Gemma's Hospice in Leeds. And we congratulate him. Oh, what a pop! It does. It makes you sort of... Oh, I've got little tears yeah. in my eyes, honestly. Oh, what a cutie. Now, uh, a most unusual sight off the Northumberland coast. To report on his Twitter page, birdwatcher and photographer John Graham caught this soft-plumaged petrel on camera. It's a long way from home because this is actually a bird native to New Zealand. But here it is in Newbegin on the sea, and Graham says there was a massive buzz as it was tracked up the country and viewed by people from other areas of Northumberland too. So there you are, there's a rare yeah. sighting. There's one for Twitchers. Yeah, on Twitter. Twitchers, they're bird watchers, aren't they? Yeah, the no, there's it? a difference between a bird watcher and a twitcher. We oh, is it? We haven't got time. Oh, right. I'm going to ask you that after the show. <laughs> OK, we do have fun. Now, <laughs> since the global pandemic created a DIY boom, many of us have been making an extra effort to make our homes even more luxurious and comfortable. Now, the interior design company Dowsing & Reynolds, they've collected a Google search data from the last year to reveal the most house-proud region in the UK. Guess? Oh, well, you can see it. Warrington. That's the most... House, it's all on autocue. I, I, I can't. I can't. There's no secrets there's no, between there's us, no is there? Uh, 313 searches per 100,000 searching for living room decor, best Hoover, and kitchen storage ideas. This is how they've compiled it. <laughs> Swansea had the most growth over the last year, with searches increasing by 113%. Searching for living room decor and how to clean the oven. Oh, I like their priorities. Yeah. <laughs> how to clean the oven. Anyway, regionally, the northeast is the most house proud region with 253 searches per 100,000, closely followed by Northern Ireland and Scotland. You I did can, not get a mention. I can well imagine that, actually. Some of my greatest friends are Geordies and they're oh, house, yeah, very house proud mm, people. There you are. Well, yeah. the, the research backs it up. It does. Now, uh, we've mentioned Wally before. Marine experts are working out how to persuade Wally the walrus to leave the Isles of Scilly. They were quite pleased when he arrived. <laughs> yeah, well, loved him a week ago. What he's been doing? He's been making a right <laughs> nuisance of himself. He's been boarding and damaging boats. Yeah, <laughs> while he was photographed <laughs> this week, he capsized an empty motorboat. He's punctured rubber dinghies with his tusks. And uh, we've been, as I say, been keeping you in touch with his progress here on, on GB News. He's been on something of a tour in Western Europe, attracting spectators off the coasts of Ireland, Wales and France. And uh, this is him. Uh, locals have now contacted American experts for advice on how to get rid of Wally. No! In, in a think, nice way, in a no. good way. That, you know, I think he just wants to be in, like, UK border force or something. He's checking those boats for counterfeit products and, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think what, he's um, whatever. security of the seas. Oh, right. Wally. Anyway, that's Wally. He's having a whale of a time, and the residents of Isn't the Isles of, a time? of Scilly are not. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, a retiree in Suffolk has made history as the first transgender woman to star on the front cover of the Women's Institute magazine. WI member Petra Wenham, who's 74 has spoken to WI Life, the publication of the group's members, after she was asked to discuss her work as a speaker and activist for a Suffolk chapter of the branch. It's called Cake and Revolution. Lorraine is her wife of 48 years and was president of her WI branch, which closed in 2019. So the retired consultant decided to find her own chapter. And in the July edition of the magazine, she said, WI members are not just accepting, but actively supportive and welcoming me to the sisterhood. Good for her. Yeah. 
Now, a student at Loughborough University has designed a potentially life-saving device that can rapidly stop catastrophic blood loss from knife wounds. This is Josh Bentley. He says his prototype device, called REACT, is quicker and more effective than the traditional method of wound packing. REACT uses pressure to prevent bleeding, targeting areas that are usually difficult to treat, such as the armpit, the groin and the abdomen. Stab victims can bleed to death in less than five minutes. So first defender's first priority is to stop excessive blood loss. Josh believes getting this device on the streets and in the hands of first responders could potentially save hundreds of lives. REACT stands for Rapid Emergency Actuating Tamponade and it's envisioned to be used by first responding police officers to scenes of knife crime. I know a few friends quite personally who have been through incidences like this and it's sort of driven me more to um, trying to get a system that could be used in real life, could make a real difference. I, I really hope that um, the development of this product can continue and that we can get something onto the streets in police hands as soon as possible. Brilliant. Now, uh, this is a good story. When Luke Worley asked for a girl's number after he met her on holiday in Cos, she gave him a number. It just wasn't hers. But it turns out that totally by chance, the girl who was called Sarah gave him the mobile number for the television and radio presenter, Maya Jama. <laughs> totally by mistake. Uh, on Twitter, he said she answered the phone and was very sweet about it, even sending him a selfie. You can see there his Twitter page. He added another tweet saying, for everyone asking for the number, not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, what a coincidence. Yeah, we like that, we like that. Brilliant. I'm going to change gear. It is good news, uh, but I, I just want to bring in this story because we want to focus on lots of things. This is a, a single mum of two who's facing a race against time to raise £50,000 for potentially life-saving cancer treatment after she was given just two months to live. Last Friday, 28-year-old Lauren Olive was dealt a devastating blow when doctors said the cancer had spread from her breast to her bones and she was told she's just got a couple of months to live. Well, Lauren's posted a video of herself online explaining why she is asking for financial help. Where I'm at today, I'm here because I've been dedicated to fighting for myself because oncology aren't fighting for me anymore, they're just giving me prognosis. Um, and that's why I'm begging for help financially for alternative therapies. And I'm so grateful for all the help I've had so far. Well, Lauren, she, she's mum to daughter Penny, who's seven, and four-year-old Arthur. She's already raised £28,000 in a matter of days. She admits it's her last chance of beating cancer. There's £50,000 to be raised for a special treatment that she's pinning her hopes on in Mexico. Uh, and I just thought we should have yeah, a look at that. Yeah, no, definitely.